Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 59 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. And this episode, um, before I even say the title, I'm just going to pre warn you I will be using anatomically correct language for your private parts and talking about sex. So I just want to put that right up front in case that's not something you want to hear about. I'll be talking about it in terms of how I'm seeing that used um, with regard to manifesting money out in the interwebs. Okay, so forewarned, for, what is it? Um, Forewarned is forearmed. I'm screwing that all up. It doesn't matter. So, um, so today's episode is your vagina is not a vending machine. All righty. It's just not. You can't put an orgasm into the universe and draw out $200 unless you're a sex worker, which if you are totally no judgment, if you, if that's what you love and you're not being forced into it. Um, so, and I may not even be able to put that title. Sorry, my microphone just dropped. I might not be able to put that title as the real title because you know, we can talk about violence, but we can't talk about the JJs. All right. And then just forgive me if I stumble around here, because I've actually been sitting on this for a couple of months, which is really unusual for me. Normally, when I get an idea for a podcast, I just do it. I just record it and, and be done with it. But this one has really been weighing on me because, first of all, I don't want to offend I don't, it's not that I don't want to offend people. I don't want to make anybody wrong in this kind of sensitive subject area. So here's what triggered this thing that was sitting, that's had me sitting on this, so to speak, topic of um, treating your vagina as a vending machine or penis. If there are any men listeners, I don't think I have a lot of male people following me. Uh, I'd love to have more, but you know, whatever. Women tend to go more for these things. Um, So your penis or vagina, but I'll be using vagina mostly because it is mostly women as far as I know that are following my work in the world. So I have been seeing this for a really long time. Now, sex magic, M-A-G-I-C-K is not new, right? Nothing about using sexuality as a portal into magic manipulation of your world is new, right? Nothing new about that at all. Here's the problem I'm seeing lately, this little aspect of it. And again, if it works for you, fabuloso, keep doing it. If you love it and it works and you can have an orgasm and that increases your business, cool. What I'm talking about is people who feel like, or women who feel like that they need to do that, that because high priestess, what's he, what is telling you to masturbate more and you'll make more money, but you're doing that and it feels gross, but you're making yourself do it because high priestess, what's her chop says is it works and it works for her. That's what I'm talking about. The people who try to follow that advice and end up worse off because they're going against their body's wisdom. For some women, when you put sexuality into the if this, then that money category, first of all, you're tapping into an archetype that's complicated, the archetype of the prostitute, which is no archetypes are wrong. They're just archetypes and things that we experience and things that we explore. So I probably will say I'm not judging anyone about 500 times because I think that is what has taken me so long to get to this because I don't want to step on anybody. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to speak to a thing I see and feel happening in myself. So if it's happening in me, I know it's happening in someone else. And it, since it won't go away, (laughs) that's what we're doing today. Okay. So it's using the sacral 
chakra, right? Our creative center where we create things, where we make things, where babies grow, where projects grow, where anything that eventually becomes tangible grows. You know, we plant seeds and they grow and we manifest them through the throat and, you know, all the, all the things about manifestation. If you're a person that struggles with money, there's a tendency to really give your power away to money. And I know this inside and out because I'm only just now coming out of that after years of the if this, then that. If I read this book, I'll get money. If I do this job, if I follow this uh, magical formula, if I do the seven steps to blah, 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 then I'll get the money. It was always if I read this book, if I do this thing, fill in the blank. If I have more orgasms, then I'll get money. Only if you have sexual trauma in your sacral chakra and you've been treated as a commodity, if you've experienced sexual energy as a transaction, as something that was you were forced to participate in, then these methods may not ever feel right to you. And that's okay. It doesn't mean you're damaged. It doesn't mean you're broken. It might mean there's a little more work to do around any sexual abuse or assaults. It might mean that treating money as a transaction is not your way. Maybe it has been. Maybe it's not anymore. Maybe we're leaving the paradigm that says we have to do anything for money. Do you see what I mean? Do you see how it's it's like I'm going to do something to my body and it's going to bring me the mysterious magical money that I can't seem to figure out. That that even just saying that makes me feel a little yuck. So we can't for some of us, we can't treat our bodies as a as a a method of transaction, like a vaginal vending machine, like a doing something, taking an action, performing an act, whether that be sexual act or even um, any kind of ritual. I mean, we could even stretch this as far as doing a forest Reiki blessing wheel, which is my favorite thing to do with the sole intention of making money, which I don't do it that way, but you could, um, might not work for you. We are moving into a time, and I get this from Karen Parker, who I study human design under, um, into a time of stepping away from transactional stuff. I do this and then you do that. Um, I do this money magic ritual and I get money or I pursue this certain career and then I get money away from that to or I trade my time I give my time to you and you give me a paycheck we're going away from that system into a system of well-being that our well-being and our devotion to the highest level of health that we can sustain, the highest level of following our body's wisdom and letting go of the mind directing things create that will create such a radiance in our body that that alone attracts to us opportunities and invitations and things to respond to, to use hum, human design language, invitations, recognition, so many signs in your environment that you know you check it with your body's authority and you know which ones to respond to and it all goes well it's not about me doing anything with my life vitality or my physical body in exchange for dollar dollar bills y'all if your sexual trauma is not resolved it, this can really be a triggering activity to get into. So then what happens to women is we, we get told by someone who we've placed in a position of authority over us that we've said, you, I think you know 
I think you know something I don't know. And so I'm going to give you money and you're going to teach me these things. And I'm going to abdicate my own responsibility to question and use discernment. So we get told, they get told, I've never taken a class focused on that, but I've seen the fallout from some of it and I'm, it's starting to piss me off. <laughs> anyway, um, give your authority away and someone says to you that this is how you do it. You increase your sexual activity. You make masturbation a ritual in order to make money. So some of the layers of that are, well, when you feel good, money's easier. So, you know, increasing your self-pleasuring experiences is automatically going to make money easier if you're really enjoying it. Another layer of that is you're, you might be in, in, enjoying it, but you're doing it for the purpose of of drawing something to you that you feel disempowered about you're you're doing it as a way to solve this money mystery that you're stuck in do you see how that's different having pleasurable good feeling experience creates money as a byproduct but you're not doing it on with the sole intention of doing it to make money there's a there's a subtlety here and I, I I know I'm struggling to articulate it I hope it's coming across I hope at some intuitive level you're you're getting it um, some people will treat clients like this I need to get clients because that's the only avenue I have for making money I've certainly been guilty of that like adding up the numbers well, I need, and this is what business people tell you to do. This is what some marketers tell you to do. We follow all the instructions and we say, okay, I need 13 clients at such and such amount in order to make enough money to get through the next quarter. And that feels terrible, but we get told to do it. And so we do it anyway. So the danger in being told to increase your sexual activity to make money and you have trauma in that chakra or you're just not in that paradigm anymore you're moving into a different way of being with money a different economic energy is if you're in the on the disempowered side still you'll do it anyway because what's her goddess name told you to because you paid money for a class and then you were instructed blanket instead of saying, hey, this is one way, but if that doesn't feel good to you, here's five other ways. You know, you were only given one instruction. And so women will then feel bad, right? Well, I did the masturbation thing, but I didn't make any more money. I must be broken. You're not broken. You don't exchange with the universe that way it distorts it it complicates it it puts a a kink in the hose so to speak it puts a twist in the dynamic that for a lot of sensitive women and for women who have trauma it doesn't work and so then you feel more broken and then you have forced yourself past the point of discomfort which then just recreates the original abuse experience when you're a child and someone's abusing you you don't want to be sexual but your body responds sexually whether you want it to or not and then that creates a whole mental tangle that can take years to un unwind and resolve so then if you're told to do this and make money, it can trigger all that icky dynamic of, and if you don't want to and you say, yeah, but my goddess class says this works, the feminine energy of the sacral, and so I'm gonna, I have to do it, right? So you overrode your body and you created a sexual response that your body didn't ask for. 
It wasn't a naturally arising urge to release some sexual energy. It wasn't a normal rise of desire that then you had an experience with. It was a, we're going to do this in order to make money. And to me, there's a violence in that that just kind of breaks my heart. I've heard a lot of people talking about it. I know that there's courses on that. And I know that it can't work for the people who are moving out of that dynamic with money and for people who have any level of unresolved trauma. And it's done with the best of intentions, right? Your body's not interested, but you need $5,000. And so you go do the thing and your body's like, well, you know, your body responds because that's the way it's built. It's nerve endings. It, it can't be helped. You can control it to some degree, but if you're really determined, <laughs> it's going to happen, right? So then your body just got to be, it got to re-experience. I'm going to use the word abuse, but that's really a little stronger than my intention. But it just got to experience being acted upon rather than acted with. If you're purposely masturbating in order to make money come into your life, that's acting on your body. That's putting in the, you know, putting in some action, hoping to withdraw a result, putting in a cause, hoping to receive an effect. That's not partnership with your body. That's using your body, punching the button, so to speak, pun intended, kind of. Hopefully, hoping that some money will come as a result of that. That's not the same as engaging with your body's natural, normal desire for sexual expression, which is beautiful and mysterious. I always tell people I'm a prude. I'm not a prude, but I think for me, sexuality is extremely sacred and I don't like joking about it. I don't think it's funny. Uh, and I know that I'm, you know, a smaller percentage of the public <laughs> that doesn't like frivolity when it comes to sexuality. To me, it's a sacred mystery that's, for, in my world, meant to be a private thing. I don't like it. <laughs> so that might be part of it is my just Scorpio offendedness <laughs> at the t trivializing of what I consider so sacred. So I think two things are happening that I find objectionable that I, you know, feel like it's objectionable enough to take a risk on losing my entire podcast audience. <laughs> oh, such a risk taker. So the two things are the unresolved trauma and pushing past it and ending up recreating abusive dynamics with yourself. And then the other part is the terribly disempowered positioning of I can't just magnetically draw money and resources to me. I have to go out and get it. I've got to read a book. I've got to be good enough. I've got to do everything the right way. I've got to follow the steps exactly. If I've got to manifest and make vision boards and if I don't get money there's something wrong with me because it worked for Daphne down the street she made a vision board and got a new car I made a vision board and my car blew up you know it does there is no one tool that works for everyone and if we don't get it that our primary activity needs to be focused on what gives me pleasure now what feels fun now maybe on Tuesday it's an orgasm maybe on Friday it's taking a nap maybe on Sunday it's making a cheesecake I don't know it's going to change and it's not always going to be the same thing and it's not going to come from some authority figure it's going to come from your partnership with your body and that is the push that's the push. 
that's the need and the tension to shift to shift from a I have to take an action in order to make money regardless of how I feel about it I have to listen to other people in order to make money and the switch is you got to go home to your body and if your body wants to have an orgasm then that's what you give it if it wants to eat nothing but cheese quesadillas for two weeks then that's what you do If your body is saying, please put me to bed earlier and let me sleep longer, then that's what you do. We need, we have to stop overriding and air quote, abusing ourselves by not listening by our body saying what it needs and us saying, fuck you, fuck you body. I don't want to eat what you want to eat. I don't want to stop eating steaks at Texas Roadhouse because they're delicious And my body is like, oh, hell no, we are not eating any meat. I had an egg yesterday. It was like the first animal product. And it was delicious. But prior to that, the thought of an egg made me want to vomit. And the thought of meat still makes me want to vomit. I don't know what's going on, but I'm listening to my body. I'm following my body's lead. I'm steeping myself in human design. Uh, You know, obviously my whole coaching thing, everything has changed because I believe in it so much because I've tested it out for myself. And I know that when I listen to my body, when I don't say fuck you to whatever my body's asking for, life's getting easier and easier. And it's scary as fuck. It's scary to have a belief that cheese quesadillas will kill you and eat nothing. I'm not, and I mean nothing but that for a couple of weeks. I eat one meal a day, usually with the vegan thing, I'm having to eat more. But on the, on the one meal a day thing, I was eating like three or four cheese quesadillas and still losing weight, but that's all I was eating. That was so weird. We're being asked to trust in ways that I know for a lot of us, we have never trusted. We have never trusted the world. The world has hurt us. The people in the world have hurt us. I experienced sexual abuse from the time I was, and sexual assault from multiple perpetrators from the time I was eight until the time I was 17. And then I experienced further sexual trauma because I didn't know that I was allowed to say no. So I did things and got involved in situations that I did not want to be in, but I didn't know I could say no. So before doing this podcast, I doubled and I've done lots of treatment on it. I've had therapy, I've had EMDR, I've had all the things. So part of my waiting on this was to make sure that I feel comfortable that this isn't triggering my personal sexual trauma. What it's triggering is my sense of, I get pretty assy when I hear people instructed to do things and I see and I can feel them overriding their own good sense in deferment to someone else. Now that is a personal issue. It's really not my business what you do. If you want to give your power away to goddess pork chop, you go right ahead. Like that, that really should be just for you. But I have a theme of justice. (laughs) I have a theme of what? that ain't right. You know, and I own it and I'm allowed to have it. (laughs) And I probably will never get over it. So here we are talking about vaginas. You can heal your sexual trauma. So if the thought of having sex and opening those parts of your body in order to manifest things is working for you again, like keep doing it. If you love it, if your body truly loves it, and it's okay with your body that you're doing it in order to create create money, good on you, mate. I can't do an Australian accent, so that was stupid. But anyway, <laughs> but if you are doing it with the sole intention to make money and you're not enjoying it, but you think it'll work, don't do that. Don't do that. No one outside of you can tell you what the dealio is on your money issues. 
or you're manifesting stuff. Nobody can tell you what that is. Everybody outside of you, everybody who's ever written a book, including all the things that I offer that are related to making money, nobody is the authority on what your body needs to get in alignment with monetary flow and resource flow. Nobody knows that but you. If you have sacral authority, it is your sacral authority that's going to say yes, this, no, that. And if there's any kind of yuck, you need to uh, slow your roll and start asking a lot of questions. What's this about? Am I stuck in the if this, then that? Do I feel like me being me, my authentic expression in the world isn't enough to bring resources to me that I have to take actions and perform and, you know, work too hard and do all the stuff? This doesn't mean run off and quit your job, by the way. It does mean start to ask, what other ways can I receive money that don't require me to exchange 9 to 12 hours of my life force every day with someone else? How many ways can money come to me? What other ways of, what other revenue streams can I make myself available for? What other doors can open here? Where do I need to work on my self-worth? Where do I need to recognize and own that me being me, my radiant embodied self is more than enough to open doorways to new money, to new exposure, to a bigger audience or a different audience, to more clients, customers, and students, and just money on the ground, getting a raise, getting a bonus. Kyle C's had an exercise to write down a hundred ways that money could come to you. It's not easy as it sounds. I highly suggest you try it. But I, I really want to stress that the if this then that bullshit doesn't work. It's all about the if this then that bullshit. <laughs> Did anybody listen to Limp Biscuit in the 90s besides me? <laughs> It's all about the he said, she said bullshit. <laughs> okay, if this then that doesn't work anymore, your well-being is what works and it is untrod territory. It is unfamiliar roads. It's roads that go in circles and figure eights and you think you're lost in the wilderness and your body is like, nope, follow me. Follow this impulse. Follow this gut feeling. Follow this leaning toward follow this yearning follow this desire follow this picture go in circles walk in a spiral walk in directions you've never walked and never thought you would walk your body is saying this is where forest reiki finally went public the trees are calling the world is calling your body is calling your mind don't know shit. Your mind doesn't know jack or shit. Your mind knows how to receive data, collect it, form it into things, do cool stuff with it, use it to visualize with, analyze it, trigger emotions, activate your system, and magnetically draw to you what you need and want in ways that you never imagined, in volume that you never imagined. Basically, do whatever you can to get home to your body. And if being in your body still sucks, work on that. Why does being in my body bore the fuck out of me? Why am I so invested in escaping it? Why am I always distracting myself? Why? Those are good questions to ask. Those are good why questions to explore. What about this moment is so awful that I need to escape it with food or Netflix or pot or whatever it is, whatever your escape hatch is. What is so horrible 
that I have to keep escaping. You might have learned that when you really did need to escape in order to grow up, in order to awaken at a pace that worked, that you could make changes in your life. But those learned behaviors, that conditioned response to being aware and feeling sensations in your body has to end. Honestly, I really do believe that's the key for a lot of us in building our businesses and changing our mindset in ways that, that, that it sticks in learning to be present with the shadow and the light, the pain and the pleasure, the boredom and the can't think of a B word that would match with that. The hallelujah Jesus moments that we all love. Hallelujah Jesus. This is awesome, right? can't have one without the other and I have a prior podcast and can't remember the number but the title is something about do we have to receive everything to receive anything and the answer to that is yes you can't push away part of your life and expect to receive just the part that you want to cherry pick it doesn't work like that so take a look where are you if this then thatting with your money that doesn't feel good in your body and you're doing it anyway because some schmuck told you to because some book told you to stop handing your authority away to everybody else if your body says no to it you don't need to know why it's saying no to it you just need to honor that you just need to pay attention to that you need to start to say yes to your body and often i'll tell you i'm gonna say at least 80% of the time, I have no fucking idea why my body is saying yes to something and no to something. Part of that is my profile. I'm a three five. Three fives often don't get to know why some things work and some things don't, why we enter into some situations and not into others. We have a veil. I think it's related more to the five number. I'd have to look that up. But there's a veil for us with those profile numbers. It's a little harder to see wh why things are and aren't. But still the bottom line is paying attention to and honoring the impulses of the body and stop trying to drive your way through life with your beautiful mind that has no decision-making capabilities. Your little beautiful dummy head that's so sweet and so intelligent and so quick and witty but it shouldn't be making the decisions. All right. So the if this, then that, knock that shit off and start to make your priority what feels good to your body, what your body is asking you for and honoring it moment by moment as best you can. It gets better over time. It's getting easier over time. I'm joking about the meat thing, but I've always been a steak eater. I spent five years as a vegetarian when my daughter was little, before she was born and after. But, you know, at the end of August, somebody flipped the meat switch off, and I really don't crave it. I, I'm joking about it, but I don't want it. You, you, you could plop a steak right down in front of me right now, and I'd say no to it without any struggle. So your body is smarter. Our bodies are smarter than we've been taught to give credit. So, no treating your vagina as a vending machine. No if this, then that. Go home to your body. You know I'm going to tell you to meditate in silence. <laughs> you know it's coming. You know I'm about to tell you to think less and feel more. And my latest favorite tagline is less hustle, more human design. Can we knock it off with the hustle? God, that's gross. That was gross to me from the very beginning. Hustle? I got your hustle right here, bitch. All right. I've had enough mouthiness for today. All right. See what you think. It's okay to disagree with me. It's actually wonderful. And also, don't send me any snotty emails. I won't read them. <laughs> Love y'all. Buckets. 
I'll steal a line from Trey Crowder and say, love you like fried chicken. Only that doesn't work anymore either because we're not eating fried chicken around here. All right, now I'm falling into an Ellen stream of conscious dialogue. So I'm going to stop here. Think less, feel more. Talk to you later.